Good evening and welcome. This is Sports Report. Andy Michal flying solo with you. Matt Hatfield out on assignment. So if the show starts to crash and burn, somebody call Mayday. But don't worry, Matt's not here, but we've got all kinds of exciting basketball action. Quarterfinals for the state. All of them played at Old Dominion in the TED, so let's get right to it. Why don't we start with the 4A group? Boys 4A. It'll be William Burr, the number four seed in the state, taking on Lake Taylor in the white, the number one seed. Off we go. Right off the bat, it's Childers. Damon Childers for William Burr from the outside. Connects on a three and a quick start for Bird. And another quick start for Bird. They can keep it rolling with Alex Fitch from three. Blake Taylor trying to get something going. They go to Joe Bryant, and yeah, he gets something going. Nice strong finish from Bryant. Blake Taylor's on the board. Inbound pass, not a good inbound pass. Demonte Taylor says, I'll take it all the way in the steal and the finish for Taylor. Good game for Taylor. Keep an eye on him throughout this one as we move along. Casey misses the tip in there. Watch the diving save and pass to Gravely to Fitch from three. Tell me these guys don't want it. 17 to 10, a seven point lead for the visitors. William Bird as we go to the second quarter. There's a tip in off the miss from Washington. Taylor comes out of nowhere for the putback. It's a nine point lead now for William Bird. The Terriers on top. Outside, there's Childress again, and he connects again. Another three-pointer from almost the same spot as before for Childress. Blake Taylor got to get something going. Titans find Dalen Jordan. He gets something going. Outside, finally, Jordan answers at 26 to 20. William Bird. Here's more Taylor. Jordan outside. Yes. Connects another three-pointer for Jordan. And now it's getting more interesting. Oh, here's some defense. Here's Travis Smith. The steal and the stop. You want some energy. You want to spark a comeback. Look to Travis Smith. William Bird gets a steal, and then they steal it right back. More theft than New York under that hoop. Jordan with the put back and scores. Meanwhile, here is McNair getting his own rebound and putting another one back. And we got a run from the Titans, and guess what? They take the lead. 29-26, three-point lead for Lake Taylor. In the corner, Ahmad Elliott, corner jumper. Yes, they keep rolling. A five-point lead for the Titans. Not finished yet. JT Wahi couldn't keep him out of the highlights for long. Here's a three-pointer for him. Meanwhile, Terrier's not giving up. Childress in the corner. He connects in the lead. Now cut back down to 10 points for Lake Taylor. Lake Taylor not finished. Dave Miller to spare. Smith with the stuff on the alley hoop jam. One more time. Here's a, a miss and a put back underneath from Darian Seaborn. Blake Taylor just continues to roll. They got their foot on the accelerator, not letting it up. Elliott, yes, from the corner. 16-point lead. Slow start for the Titans, but not a slow finish. They keep rolling. Here's Childress, not giving up, but he runs into a wall. And here is Taylor on the other end. Takes it all through the defense and won the foul for Taylor. He connects, and Lake Taylor just keeps on rolling. Joe Bryant off the put, a one-handed putback from Joe Bryant. 22-point lead. Where did this come from? They just blow the doors off once they got their foot on the accelerator. And they just keep a brick on the accelerator. Des Palmer connects from outside. Not giving up on the Terriers, though. Inside to Ryan Dipple. He scores again. And one more time, here's a steal from Bryant. Behind the back to Bryant. Over to Taylor for the finish. The step-through move. And that's the icing on the cake if you're Blake Taylor. They're going to hold it and just wait for the horn and hold on. Final score, you saw it, 78-55. Lake Taylor rolls, the number one seed will move on. Despite a pretty good game from William Bird from Damon Childress, 19 points for him, five three-pointers for Childress. For Lake Taylor, it was Jalen Jordan. Got him sparked and kept him going. 14 points for him and two threes. Mott Elliott, also a good game, 13 points, four of 11 from the field and two threes for him. 78-55 the final. More action. What else have we got from the Ted? Well, let's go to the 3A guys. Why not? 3A division. Oh, check it. No, we're going up. Oh, this is the 5A. This is 5A. Albemarle taking on Hampton. Albemarle the three seed. Hampton the two seed. So it's a tight matchup. The Patriots from Albemarle. The Crabbers from Hampton. Right off the back, we got action. We got the tip. Hampton controls it to the outside. And Jalen Ray, there he is. From three, yes. Jalen Ray connects at the three-point lead. That's what happens when you hit a three. They give you three points. Three-point lead early for Hampton. More three-pointers coming. Marquise Godwin, yes. Godwin from deep, way deep three. 
And it's a quick early lead for Hampton. Could Albemarle get going? They need something. Well, they find Grant. Kersey, three-pointer. They can answer. They can shoot from outside, too. Nobody wants to shoot from inside in this game. Every point scored from outside of the arc. More threes, is it? Will they kick it outside? Yep, there it is. Miles Adams, Yates, he hits a three. And we don't even need the paint in this game. We'll just cut the whole floor out from inside the arc because nobody uses it. Underneath we go. Here is, oh no, is it, is it gonna be? It, yep, it is. Jalen Ray, a deep three, it's Curry level three. Way outside, another three pointer. Nobody shoots from inside. 23-19, a four point lead for Hampton in a close game as we head to the second quarter. Albemarle trying to get something going. Here's another three. Austin Katstra from outside. He may have had a foot on the line, but we'll give it to him because everybody else gets threes, why not? More passing, watch the ball movement here. This is a shot, and somebody actually misses from three. And watch this. Underneath, somebody scores from inside. Katstra underneath the putback, the first two point game of the highlight. 24 26, a two point lead for Albemarle, and the three seed is stoked. They're on top halfway through the second. Well, what happens next? Well, guess what? Yep, we go back to three. All is right in the world again. Katstra from the corner, another deep three. Let me just keep it going from three point range. Not quite though. Here's James Hahn driving. Look at the step through move from James Hahn. Takes it to the rack and that opens a nine point lead for the three seed. Thinking upset, Albemarle, the Patriots. As we go to the second half, could Hampton get something going? Well, they gotta play some defense first. And well, that's not the way to play defense. He left Castro wide open by himself with a stuff underneath. And Albemarle, they're happy. The bench is ready to go. They're feeling it. Hampton says, yeah, they're not quite done yet. They're going to pass it around and find Amir Capehart. Yep. Capehart from the outside. He hits the three, and Hampton's not done. Hampton says, we're still alive in this. Watch Matthias Gaver off the rebound. What's the put back here? Up and around. Look at it. He uses the force. He had to use the force to get that to go in. Capehart scores in the foul. He gets one. On the other side, that well, one team uses the force. The other team uses a guy named Ham. Underneath the step through move. Han under through. And it's an 11 point lead for Albemarle. Hampton cutting into it, trying to get him back in this thing. It's back and forth. We go to the fourth quarter now. What happens here? That is a long three. Adams Yates connects. And he just keeps on chucking. Why not? They got to go in and just keep doing it. Hampton looking to get something going. Got to play some defense. Not much happening for him. It's all right here. Steal by Ray all by himself and he stuffs it. Ray trying to spark a comeback. Hampton needs to get something going here. Albemarle says, no, nah, you're not gonna get anything going. We're gonna keep on rolling here. Han driving again, and the big guy just keeps getting inside and keeps scoring for it. Into the corner I go, and there's Katstra on the baseline. Oh, there he is. One-handed stop just for exclamation point. Hampton unable to make a comeback. Albemarle holding them off in the three seed. We got an upset, upset, first upset of the show. Three seed takes down the number two seed, 65-54 the final. Hampton, a pretty good game from Jalen Ray, 31 points with four threes. Caber also a good game, 10 points for him, but just too much Austin Castro from Albemarle, 26 points. He also hit two threes from the big guy. Jake Hahn, 15 points. Six of 13 from the field and seven rebounds for Hand. Too much inside presence for Albemarle. And the number two seed goes down. Albemarle will move on to the semifinals. However, stay with us. We've got a lot more quarterfinal action coming up. All of it's from the TED right here on Sports Report. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Report. Andy Bichaud with you. Oh, set going itself. Matthew Hatfield out on assignment. He'll be back. We went to 4A. We went to 5A. Now let's go to the big one. 6A. Back to the TED we go. West Springfield, the number three seed, taking on there. You see him. Oscar Smith, the Tigers, the number two seed. Another 3-2 matchup. The last 3-2 matchup we saw was an upset. Could the Tigers avoid the upset? West Springfield, the Spartans. Off the tip, we got action right away. Desmond Devane jumping into the bench to save the tip. 
All kinds of action. We don't even have any points yet in this action. Pew, now we do have points. Darren Pugh with a solid drive going off on the glass for Pugh and Oscar Smith jumps out on top. You want to see more Pugh? We saw Pugh, Devane. Now here's both of them. Pugh to Devane from the corner. A three-pointer for Devane is good. And Oscar Smith, the Tigers with a quick start. Rush Springfield trying to come back up. They're not done. They're going to say, hold on, we can shoot from outside too. Here is Storr. Andrew Storr from the corner is good. And at the end of the first quarter, yep, tie game, nine points apiece as we head deep into battle here. We head to the second quarter, all tied up. Underneath, inside some good passing. There's Lewis Junkham. Underneath, the big guy connects, giving Western Springfield the lead. You want more passing? There's some more good passing. They rotate it around, more passing, more Storr. From the outside, Store again, a three-pointer on the other side, same result. Store connects, and now Oscar Smith finds himself needing to come back. So where do they go? They go to Pew. Pew with the pass, and the outside is Sean Rogers from three. Rogers connects with a deep three, and Oscar Smith comes back, and at halftime, it's 18 each. Nobody's allowed to score more than nine points a quarter in this game. 18 all as we hit the second half. Tigers rotated it around. They find Donald Hicks. That's a good find. Hicks from three connects, and Tigers taking the lead. Meanwhile, coming right back on the Spartans. Look at the scoop move. In amongst the trees is Wiley Welsh underneath. The visitors are happy. Look at him. Up ahead, though, watch this. Gabriel Kyer spinning and scoring underneath. He really shoots from outside, but he can score from inside, too. Late in the third, it's a five-point lead for the three seed. The Spartans on top. Spartans looking to add to it. We said Kyle usually from outside. Well, there he is, and that's what usually happens when he gets left from outside. Don't leave him. Three-pointer. Start of the fourth quarter. Look at that. They're jumping. They're jumping. Lots of orange fans really happy. They're happy because they got a seven-point lead as we head to the fourth quarter. Oscar Smith, the two seed in trouble. Would there be another upset? Well, here's Pew trying to spark a comeback. Pew driving and scoring, going high off the glass. That's a nice finish from Pew. More Pew, you want more Pew? You have some more Pew. Here comes Pew to the corner though, this time over to Hicks. Hicks is, okay, we got a little bit of space. That's all we need. A little bit of space is good enough for the outside, Jay. And guess what? That seven point lead is gone. Down to a two point game and it's getting late. This is gonna be a classic finish. Here's Pew. Watch Pew, the drive and the high bank off the glass is good. Pew scores and now Oscar Smith out in front. West Springfield though, underneath, they're gonna fight. John Camp through the defense and stuffs it with two fists. They love it, look at the score, 41-39. Three point lead for the Tigers, under two minutes to go. Pew to the corner to Rogers. What temperature is that blood? Oh, it's cold. It's cold, cold blooded the dagger. The corner from three from Rogers. Oscar Smith he loves it. They're cheering, they're happy. The dagger, and now they're just gonna kill the rest of the clock out, and that will do it. Oscar Smith comes from behind, holds off, and the two seed moves on, avoids the upset. 48 to 41, the final. Was Springfield, Lewis John Camp, 13 points. Five of nine from the free throw line. Kyer, nine points for him. Not enough, though. Donald Hicks led him with 16 points for the Tigers. Eight rebounds to Oswell and Darren Pugh. There's the man that sparked the whole comeback. 14 points for him. Three assists, five of 10 from the field. Four of seven from the line. We are not done yet. We've got girls action coming up and some more boys. More action, more quarterfinals from the TED when we come right back here on the Sports Report. Welcome back to Sports Report. It's the final block of the show. And if you like dogs, you're in the right spot of the show because we got lots of greyhounds for you in this one. Let's start with the girls in the quarterfinals. Once again at the TED, here's the Lady Greyhounds. Norcom taking on the Bees from Brookville. It's Brookville in the dark jerseys. The number four seed, the number one seed. Lady Greyhounds in the white. And right off the bat, Brookville not going to be intimidated. Hannah Young from outside hits the three-pointer. 
And the bees on top early. Look at that. Three to nothing lead. That's what happens. We discussed this earlier. That's what happens when you hit a three. They give you three points. Three point lead for the bees. Back come the Greyhounds, though. Inside, look at Sinasia Everett off the glass. And we get a tie game. Just under a 130 left to go. There it is. 130 to go in the first quarter. And it's six all. The bees not going anywhere. Inbound pass, knocked away, oh, well, they keep their control. They move it around, good rotation, good rotation, and a splash from Megan Dre from outside, nine to eight. Brookville on top, a one point lead for the four seed. Uh oh, here's a steal though, picked off here, it's Aisha Savage, and she's gonna go all the way by herself off the glass to steal and the score from Aisha Savage. Savage tried to keep things under control. The cheerleaders are happy. They're dancing. They're dancing because they got a lead. It is 12 to 9. End of the second quarter we go. 12 to 9. Lady Greyhounds up. Not for long. That is Tiffany Rixey from outside. The three pointer is good and the bees hanging right with them. 14 all late in the second quarter. Midway through the second quarter. Tie game. This one's going to go back and forth the entire game. Here's another steal from Destiny Jones. Gets the interception and give it back to her. Give her another shot at it. Jones with the interception. Jones with the finish. Jones gives the Greyhounds the lead. 16-15. Back and forth we go. Brookville. Watch this. An underneath to the elbow. And hitting it is Young from inside. She hits that one from inside three-point range. A little too close for her sometimes. She hits that one. It's a nine-point lead for the Bees. They stretch the lead to nine if they go to the second half. Meanwhile, you got to play better defense than this. Wide open jumper and Kayla Marshall connects 32 to 20. The Bees send it to a 12 point lead for Brookville. Norcom's going, what's going on? We're the one seed. We got to get going here. And they do get going. Naya Hardy with a good finish inside. Trying to get something sparked, but the Bees stubborn. Still a 12 point lead. Still in the third quarter though. Plenty of time. Still got to play good defense and that is not good defense. Rixley left open. And it's an eight point lead. They did cut it down a little bit here as we head to the fourth quarter and eight point lead for Brookville. Alexis, oh man, wide open Alexis Roser and she makes them pay. Three pointer good, 13 point lead for the Bees who are not intimidated coming basically into the home market of Norcom. Look at the finish here. Michaela Knox not giving up, driving baseline. The lead is now down to 12. It was 13. They cut it to 12. Not a lot of time left, though. Still, some good things can happen. You get a free throw. You get the miss from Young. And then the rebound by Marshall. You can't let that happen. And then Young, the cutter, let her finish it. No good on the free throw, but she gets the layup. And Brookville, the bees come in here and pull the upset. There it is. Look at that. They're psyched. They're happy. The number four seed takes down the number one seed in the 3A girls division. The Brookville Bees moving on to the semis. Final score 52 to 39. Nia Hardy with an, a valued attempt at 11 points for Norcom, but too much Hannah Young. 16 points and two threes for her. And look at the scoring. They just spread it out. Marshall, Rixie, Dre, Roser, all eight points spreading it around, combining to collect that win. Good team effort from Brookville. You want more Greyhounds? We got more Greyhounds. It's another number one seed for the Greyhounds, this time on the boys' side. Let's go check it out. Back to the 10 we go. Norcom, the number one seed in the 3A boys' division, taking on Western Albemarle. We got all kinds of Albemarles, all kinds of Springfields. They come in from all over. There's the Warriors, Western Albemarle, the Warriors in the dark jerseys, the number four seed. Number one seed in the white, and that is Travis Fields hitting from outside. No hesitation. Just fires. Why not? Chuck it up there. It's a 7 0 run to open the game for Norcom. More action, more intercepting action. This is Fields up ahead, and Travis Ingram, the stuff. The finish. Think of the jam from Ingram. And he's psyched. They're, not, they're focused, though. Look at it. He's not overly psyched. They jump out to a 9 0 run, though, quickly. And now finally trying to get back into it is Albemarle, and they do. Austin Cress underneath finally ends the run and gets the Warriors on the board. 12 to 4 though. Finally they get that run ended because they get some offense going here. Up ahead, here's Ryan Ingram. And he goes to the rack and he gets the scoop in. Off the break, and there they do. They get it running a little bit. 19 to 12, a seven-point lead in the second half. So they're trying to fight back, fight their way back into it. They ended one run. KJ Davis says, all right, no problem. We'll just start another run. KJ Davis, the jumper from the corner. The lead goes back to eight for Norco. 
There's Davis. Just why Davis had a good game of this. But keep your eye on him. Up ahead here is Darian Allison with a finish. He had a pretty good finish. And the lead pushed back to 10 points for Norco. 26-16 late in the half. You want to keep things going. How do you get back into it if you're elbow on? Well, you find guys wide open by themselves underneath the hoop. Teo Ramponi. That's the way you get back into it. The lead is 10 as we go to the half. 28-18. Second half action. Trying to get a start. Got to get a quick start if you're Western Albemarle in the second half. That's a good start. Carrington Murphy underneath the finish. Still a 14-point lead, though, as we get lower and lower into the third quarter. Watch the ball movement here. Almost lost it. Gets it back. Nice rotation. Nice ball movement. And there's Kaufman. And there's a three-pointer. Three-pointer cuts the lead to nine as we head to the fourth. And now it's doable. You're within shouting range. So we keep an eye on it. J.J. Davis has shot this. Wham! Three-pointer from the quarter. You can shout distance at that all you want to. 14-point lead, a 5-0 run for Norcom after they almost came back. And here's a steal, though. Stealing it is Ingram up ahead. Gets the pass right back. He's playing volleyball. Good finish from Ingram. 12-point lead. Now they're trying to hang around here, but time running out on them. 341, just under four minutes to go. They're going to need some help. K.J. Davis says, no, you're not getting any help from us. You can have that. There's a reverse from K.J. Davis. Staying calm and collected. This is the way one seed should play. They finish you off when they have you. They just put the foot down and don't let you come back. And K.J. Davis not letting him come back. Another score for Davis. He just keeps it rolling for the Greyhounds. Underneath, though, they're not quite giving up yet. Ingram from outside. Great game for Ingram. A three-pointer shot from him from the corner. A lot of points from him, just not quite enough. And if you're the Greyhounds, want to finish with an exclamation point. Travis Ingram, the stuff, two-fisted exclamation point. 56-42, the final. Norcom, unlike the girls, holds on to that one seed and takes out the number four seed. Good challenge from Western Abermarle. Too much Norcom in the end, though. Look at Ryan Ingram, though. 24 points from him, eight of 19 from the field. Crest had eight points, not enough, though. Norcom, KJ Davis. 17 points, 7 of 18 from the field. Travis Field kicked in 12. Ingram also kicks in 12. And the Norcom, the Greyhounds, moving on to the semifinals. That is about all we have. We had a lot of action today. Lots of stuff coming up next week, though, as we roll on to the state tournament. We got semifinals. We may even have a couple championships for you. Hopefully, Matt Hatfield will be back. But you know, we'll stretch out here. <clears throat> Just take care of the set for him on his guard. Hopefully he'll be back next week. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Andy Michal. This was Sports Report.